Friel. I'm the founder and manager of Cross Kennan Lane Animal Sanctuary. We're getting phone calls on a daily basis, sometimes more than once a day, and it could be anything at all. It could be horses on the road. You have the ill-treated, neglected ones that are just left abandoned in fields, left to starve to death. My name's Janice Watt, and I've been volunteering with Cross Kennan for 13 years now. I would tend to respond to welfare calls to go out and check on the horses and see if there is an actual welfare issue that needs to be addressed. If there is any, I would contact the other relevant people that need to be involved, that is the police and the vet. Speak with the owner to ensure that the, the animal receives the care and attention it requires or the animal is seized and a prosecution is taken against the owner. Well, one of the things we recognised at Cross Kennan was that the uh, actual legislation that was in place was woefully outdated and certainly didn't allow us to intervene uh, before the horse suffered. So Cross Kennan worked with uh, the Department of Agriculture's Animal Welfare Bill team in order to make recommendations on the new Act to ensure that it would be fit for purpose and that it would actually be able to help us help animals that were in distress. We went down to the Cave Hill. That pony was a week of work. He was not happy at all to be caught. We have a big metal pen that we built up in the corner of the field. The pony followed Charlene into the pen and then we put the head collar on with a long stick and ropes to attach it in place. And then we put him onto the horse butt. You're talking maybe three hours overall because he was very lame. The vet assessed him and wanted to keep him. So he's had x-rays done. So he has to stay in a stable for six weeks and then we're waiting to see if an owner comes forward, but so far no one has. body score a horse from naught to five with five being the fattest and he was a body score naught. The most disturbing fact was that his left eye was enlarged, swollen, in a terrible state. We managed to catch him up, we got a vet out to assess him. He was brought to the sanctuary and had intensive work done with him but we did hire more of his history and we found that different people had been working with him trying to get him riding. He'd injured a lot of different people so we have him as companion only now and he's made friends here at the sanctuary. He lives in one of the shelters, plays, gallops about, has a ball. I think he's just turned into a wonderful horse. We try wherever possible to rehome them. We send out a borrower's application for them. Uh, people fill it in. Then we show them the ponies we have. If they're interested, we go out and do a home visit. And this is all just simply to protect the horse. They're never sold on again. They're only ever loaned that they don't end up in the same situation that they came from. Without either volunteers or people helping us with fundraising, we just couldn't go forwards. But we're constantly looking for new volunteers. It suits anybody's level of fitness. They can simply groom a horse, walk a dog, help us with mucking out, or become a very, very big part of Cross Kennan. Without the fundraising, we would be absolutely lost. We do riding lessons, we do pony parties, but we need more people on the outside holding their own fundraisers. The biggest expense for Cross Kennan is our uh, overheads regarding feeding, uh, bedding and veterinary bills. When the Robinson family contacted us to tell us of their plans of releasing another CD in memory of Laura, uh, the first thing that came to mind was rather than put the money towards feeding costs and vets bills, which are very important, that we would build possibly a field shelter or two and maybe put a plaque on them as well, just in memory of Laura.